Greetings. This video is meant to be a follow-up to the uh, rapture correction warning. As you know from last time we talked about it, that the rapture is actually scheduled to happen at the end of the tribulation and not before. We've also said how now at this time what we're watching for is the revelation of Antichrist. And then after that he reigns for about three and a half years, a little longer than that, at which time the Lord will return just before the battle of Armageddon on the same day as Jesus said in Luke 17. And so we know this, but now the next question might be, okay, you have told us that what we look for next is the revelation of Antichrist. Is there a way to know when the Antichrist will be revealed? And the answer is he will be revealed after World War III. There is a plan in place by which uh, the powers that be, these hidden powers, sometimes called shadow government, uh, they have planned for three world wars. And by use of these three world wars, they will bring the new world order, world government, into place. And it will be at this time that the Antichrist takes over the governments of the world. All men will worship him. He will seek for them to take his mark. It probably won't happen immediately, but it will happen soon. And of course, it will never be fully accomplished because there will be Christians here right up until the end. So what I want you to be aware of is that there was a, an Illuminati and Freemason named Albert Pike. He led those organizations from 1859 to 1891. And in 1871, he wrote a letter to his counterpart, Giuseppe Mazzini, who was in Italy. His name sounds like it, doesn't it? And he told him how his spirit guide had given him instructions on how the world could be brought under control by the use of three world wars. And I would really like you to know what that letter says. But it's, it would take a lot of time. And so I have a link. Hopefully there will be a link in the description. It is not the best. We're having a little trouble with our internet connections here in Botswana, having the availability that we want. Uh, but it is a, at least the person will read the letter that Albert Pike wrote. And he is describing the three world wars. Now, the objective of these three world wars is to bring the nations under heel. In other words, it's to show them the futility of national governments and so that in the end, they will embrace world government. And of course, they will embrace the Antichrist. As you would see, if you look at this, this description, you will see what Albert Pike wishes to bring in at the end is uh, the pure doctrine of Lucifer. That's right, Satan's pre-fallen name. So if there's ever an indication that the Freemasons and Illuminati would like to bring in this kind of government, uh, that should answer that question. It's, uh, it's not really a question. And so, but what does the Bible say? As Christians, of course, we believe the Bible. Uh, I think that many times, as Christians, you know, like we might see that world government is going to come. There's going to be a lot of devastation and whatnot. Uh, but we don't really think about how it's going to happen. I mean, we'll come to the time and all of a sudden God just snaps his fingers or Satan just snaps his fingers and everything falls into place. No, this plan for world government has been in effect for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. It takes an awful lot to control the world on every level. And so you can believe that there is a plan, and Albert Pike certainly represents this plan. And so I hope that you will uh, click on this link. It will give you that information. It was actually through knowledge of this letter that I came to understand that there was a plan for world takeover and that these wars were planned. Uh, to us laymen, of course, the press is very controlled. They will say, this side did this and this side did that. Okay, and, and, and you have to believe them because you don't, you don't know what else is. The internet has given us the ability to look into these things, but you have to dig and you have to pray, because the truth will be somewhat buried. Now, I wanted to go over World War III a little bit more with you, uh, to debunk some of the myths, to answer some of the questions, hopefully. Of course, right now we have the ongoing war with Russia and Ukraine, and some have feared that this is uh, the beginning of World War III. In one sense, I think that it could be. Uh, I will tell you right now, I don't know everything. 
uh, but I have sought the Lord, I know his word, and we have been following this for years, it seems like it's a little too early for World War III, that there is still some prophecy to be fulfilled before that. It seems that way, and also by virtue of the plans that we know about that have been revealed for the takeover with world government, it seems a little early, but there is no question that all the elements are in place because this war with Russia and Ukraine is really a proxy war between America and Russia. It was in 2014 that America, uh, through the CIA, uh, we overthrew the government in Ukraine and we put in our own government, uh, you know, one that was favorable to us. And in the years since then, we have been building up forces and uh, military, especially missiles, through NATO being very close to Russia's western border there in Eastern Europe, so much so that Russia is very threatened by the presence of NATO. And this is really what they've been protesting against for a long time. And also the people in Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine have been protesting for a long time. And so in lieu of these things, Russia has felt threatened. That's one thing. There's more, there's more points than this, but I will just leave it at that. It's just to say that for the most part, the media portrays Putin as some kind of Hitler, that he's some kind of dictator trying to bring about an empire, and that is in no way the case. But make no mistake about it, World War III is coming, one way or the other. Now, the plans of the elite say that World War III will begin in the Middle East with a regional war, most likely with Israel and Iran. They have been fighting a proxy war also for probably 20 years now. They have been at each other. Most of that is hidden from the press. And so it will begin with that, and it will certainly engulf the world. Uh, China and Russia will attack the United States. North Korea will attack South Korea. And it's just a time when things will become violent. If you look at the history of World War II, you would know originally World War II uh, would have begun with the Japanese invasion of China. I think it was 1933. And even... I think it was 1938, Hitler was invading Czechoslovakia, but it wasn't until Hitler invaded Poland that France and, and England declared war against Germany. That was the official start of World War II, and of course America did not come into it until near the end of 1941. And so these things have a way of building over a while, and all the elements of this war are in place with Russia and Ukraine, but I do not believe it is yet. I think it will still be, uh, you know, maybe two years, but there are some, of course, predicting it much sooner. And uh, as far as Christians go, as far as spirituality and, and salvation, we need to be ready now, both for us and for our loved ones. So please hear uh, what I will say. There are some misgivings, there are some misunderstandings about World War III. And as we look at this scripturally, uh, we will see there's, there's a number of things in Revelation. I believe that the description of World War III in Revelation comes in chapter 9, verses 13 through 19. Now I'm choosing to read this to you, and I will try not to interpret anything. And that way, if you're a spirit-led Christian, you can just lead, God, let God lead you, and not myself. So here it is. This is the sixth trumpet sounding. There are seven trumpets listed in Revelation 8 and 9. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, that's 200 million, I'm just interpreting. And I, heard the, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, 
for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. So I, le- I will leave that uh, again for the Holy Spirit to translate this to you, if you would regard it prayerfully. I regard this to be the Third World War. But there are several other things to consider that you may have heard, and I want to address them. One thing that is often heard is Armageddon, the Battle of Armageddon. Now, I will tell you that the Battle of Armageddon is that battle that happens the same day Jesus will take his own back to heaven, to the marriage supper of the Lamb, the same day we will all return as Jesus himself fights in the Battle of Armageddon. That's the last day. Okay. Armageddon itself, the word, is only found in Revelation 16, 16. It's kind of an easy scripture to remember. 16, 16 in Revelation. Other than that, the place of Armageddon is never mentioned. Uh, It's strange how much humanity remembers that. and They remember that as doomsday. And so uh, I just wanted to set that straight. There is another part. In Revelation 17 and 18, it talks about the judgment of Mystery Babylon, the great whore. Now, many people have characterized this as the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, My wife and I believe that Mystery Babylon is actually the the United States. Okay, it could be a city, it could be New York or Washington, but you know, Babylon itself was both a city and a nation. And so we think that it is the United States There are many good reasons to think that, which I am not going to go over with you at this time. I don't need to convince you of that. America is slated for judgment, whether they are mystery Babylon or not. And I believe that this this will be a part of World War III, at least what I see in the plans for World War III, that China and Russia will be working together to take down America. I believe it will be at that time that uh, mystery Babylon will fall, and that is what what uh, the prophecy will be fulfilled of Revelation 17 and 18. Please forgive me uh, if I stutter a little bit. I know this well, but there are there is a lot of information I want you to have. And then there is one other thing, one other thing to consider. Many times the professing church has heard that World War III is in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. This, this uh, begins, it talks about Gog and Magog. Uh, I believe that Magog is the area, is the is the nation in the area, and Gog would be the leader of Magog, being addressed in these in these chapters. If you look on a map, typically the area of Magog is identified as where Russia is today. Uh, some people argue with that. I don't really care about that. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is, I have studied the Bible for years. And I am astounded that anybody could think that Ezekiel 38 and 39 would be World War III. Of course, for many of them, if they see this happening, they think that's when the rapture will happen. No, this is a battle that takes place after the millennial reign of Christ, after the thousand years. If you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, all you have to do is cross-reference it with Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. And you will see this is a reference to the same battle. It happens after the thousand-year reign of Christ. Satan is loosed from his prison for a season. He goes forth to deceive the nations, and he moves them to fight against Israel. And yes, they list Gog and Magog just the same. And if you will look in Revelation 20, verse 9, the same as in Ezekiel 39, 6, it is both referring to how God will destroy the enemies with fire. Not only that, if you look back at Ezekiel, really the prophecy is not just in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It really starts in chapter 34 and goes through 39. If you will study this, you will see there are many characteristics of this Israel that do not fit the description of the nation of Israel in the Middle East today. Something like uh, in 38.11, it talks about, you know, Magog, and the other countries, it's talking about Libya and Persia and Ethiopia, not just, not just Magog, okay, but saying they're coming against. And uh, what it says in 38.11 is it says, they will be moved against the people that was at peace. They were living without bars and gates. 
they were just free. I mean, you will see this in another place earlier. You will see that they, they could sleep in the woods. They were so safe. This is not Israel today. This is not Israel today. They are very much under threat all the time. And every man in Israel is a member of the military, at least the reserves. And so it is not the same time. This battle in Ezekiel 38 and 39 happens after the millennial reign of Christ. I have dubbed it the final conflict. Uh, however, the Bible itself does not characterize it with a name. And so I wanted you to know that if you don't want to believe me and you still want to think it is so, it doesn't hurt, but Satan is misdirecting you. You know, you're not looking in that, in that right direction. So we are looking for a time that after World War III, the Antichrist will come. Now, I want to give you the setup of this. You have seen that the Bible says that one-third of men will be slain. So we are looking at, right now, we're looking at between 2.5 billion and 2.7 billion people. This is an incredible amount of people. This is an incredible destruction. So the Antichrist will come after this. You can imagine what this means when Satan himself comes as an angel of light to deceive the world. And he will deceive the world. The world will be in despair. It will be on the verge of destruction. People will be starving. There is radiation. They will readily embrace the Antichrist. They will think that God himself has come to save the world from total destruction. He will be on the side of world government. He will cry peace and safety. And as the word also says, he through peace shall destroy many. So you can see what a desperate state the world will be in after this happens. Now when will the Antichrist come? I can't tell you that. If this war is what it seems to be, that is a, a, a nuclear war, that happens in about an hour, that kills several billion people, or perhaps these billions, all of these, some of them may be slain in the aftermath because they can't provide for their own needs and things like that. This is an, this is an incredible, incredible destruction. Okay, You would imagine, if this were the case, that the infrastructure of the world would be down, and the devil wants to wait until everyone can see him, so that everyone will worship him. Your televisions would work, uh, but you can be assured that there will be a display in the sky that will be a phony display made up from technology that we have that will present uh, the Messiah that every area of the world, or each region of the world, would see the Messiah that they expect to return coming. So this is why you have to be warned against this false pre-tribulation rapture. It's going to be a very, very difficult deception uh, to escape. So I wanted to give you a little information on that. It is World War III we're looking for next to lead to the revelation of Antichrist. Some have said it could be up to a year after the war. I don't think it will be that long because, frankly, they are planning for this war. And so I think it will, it will happen sooner, but I can't tell. So, brethren, be ready. Understand what lies ahead. And I really hope that your love for Christ is in heaven with him and not because of the good times he can give you on earth. That's a prosperity gospel that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God bless you.